All right, so as usual, I just want to start with a brief prayer in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the success of this three days workshop. We thank you for day one, for day two, and the third day, which is today. We ask that as many that has joined in these three days, that you would help them to understand and even to practice all that they've learned and let it help them in their personal career development, in their projects and in life in general. In Jesus' name we have prayed, amen. Okay, so I'm going to be sharing my screen. That's my mentally on my screen, just a second, thank you. All right, so that's what your mentally desktop looks like. For those of us that have it, Please ensure that when you're downloading Mendeley, you're downloading Mendeley Desktop. That's the focus for our training. There's another version of Mendeley called the Reference Manager. The Reference Manager. That's not the focus of our training. I know that Mendeley is migrating, but they haven't fully done that. But for now, the easier version and the one that is still available and is easy to understand is your Mendeley Desktop. So, that's where we are, and that's what we are sticking to for the purpose of this training, for the purpose of this training. Please put your, mess, your questions on the Q&A. If you put a question on the chat box, it's going to be missing in the midst of a lot of chats, okay? All right, so now the next question is, how do we arrange our references into folders? So I'm sure you can see my own Mendeley desktop. It's a practical hands-on training. So I want to indulge you to please um, open your Mendeley while you're in this class and practice as we go along, practice as we go along, okay? So you can see that I have some folders. If you look at the left, hand side of your screen, you will see a lot of folders here. And I want to teach you how to create them and how to put your references into folders nicely arranged. You may be working on five, 10, 15, 20 different um, research works at the same time. So you want your references to be arranged according to probably the research or the collaboration that it pertains to, so that everything is nicely put together as usual. So you just come under here where it says, create folder. I hope you guys can still hear me, okay? So you come in where it says create folder, okay? And you click on create folder and a blank folder called an untitled folder comes up. Here you type the name of the folder that you want to create. So I'm going to say research methodology training. So that's the name of this folder and press enter. And it's, it arranges it um, in an alphabetical manner. Okay, so it's arranged alphabetically, automatically. So if I want to put in some references into this folder, most times if you add a new reference, right, it comes into recently added, recently added. On the left-hand side of your Mendeley desktop, you would see, so I was talking about how to make folders. So I was able to tell you how to make a folder. And next, I was explaining under the My Library section what they all mean. So if you've imported a reference into Mendeley, you can find it under Recently Added, or you can find it under the All Documents, okay? Either under Recently Added or under All Documents section. Those are the two places that you can find your, your reference. So if you go under All Documents, the most recently added, right, are usually at the top, okay? So this is recently added, <coughs> excuse me. So if you want to select a reference and put into your new folder, so I have the folder I just created, which is the research methodology training folder. It is empty because here is blank, right? Then I go to where all my documents are or where the ones I recently added are, even recently read is also here. I select the reference I want to 
take it to the folder and you simply drag it. Drag it means click, don't unclick and move into the folder, okay? Moving it into the folder, it is still going to be here because it is still recently added. But when you click on your research methodology training folder, you will see that that reference is now in that folder. You can drag and drop more than one reference at a time. All that, all you need to do is click on one, hold down your shift key to select multiple references, okay? If you want to select a group, so you hold down shift and control and it highlights a whole group. Still holding down all those buttons, you highlight, you select it and you drag, okay? So you drag it into the folder. So I'm dragging it into the folder. So you can drag it individually, you can drag as a group. So I've gone to the folder and you can see that they are all nicely put in there, okay? So that's um, for the first part of how to arrange your references in folders. Another way you can also arrange references in folders is directly from your web importer. When you're importing the reference into your Mendeley, you indicate the folder directly where you want that reference to be inserted. So it's not going to insert it generically, it will insert it directly into the folder that you want it to be inserted, okay? So these are some references and I want to insert it into Mendeley. So I've searched out an article it was here previously. So I'm going to reshare my screen and change the one I was sharing previously. So I'm sharing my Google Chrome screen right now. So that screen you're seeing right now, there's a reference on that page and I want to insert it into Mendeley. I don't just want to insert it. I want to insert it directly into a folder, directly into a folder. All right, so I hope you can all see my screen. So I'm opening my Mendeley um, sites, Mendeley Web Importer. All right, so my Mendeley Web Importer is opening, it's taking a while to open. I guess that has to be network issues. So once your Mendeley Web Importer opens, you see your list of folders arranged there. So you have to indicate the folder directly where you want the reference to be inserted. So once you do that and you say insert, okay, so that's it. So my Mendeley Web Importer, I don't know if you can see that particular screen. You highlight the reference you want to insert. You can see here it's on Clinical Skills Lab. You click on the arrow beside it. You see all your folders. So far you've synchronized it. All your folders will be arranged here, okay? All your folders will be arranged. Sometimes it takes a while for the, the, the last folder you just created to be updated online. So if you don't see a folder that you just, you just created, don't be scared. Sometimes it takes a while for you to be updated, okay? So you just click on the folder, these are all folders, all these are folders, okay? If you don't click on any folder, it will just download it directly and put it with the pool of all your references that are not in particular folders. But if you wanted to put directly into a folder, so far you've created those folders previously, they will appear here. You simply click on the folder you want it to import to and click on add, this add button here. And it spins and once it has added, the blue button fades off to show that it has been properly added. Please always synchronize your Mendeley as often as possible. 
Synchronize your monthly as often as possible. Synchronizing it means that you're updating what is on your desktop with what is on the web and making both of them to be the same. So as you import, it imports into the web because that is a web-based importer. And when you synchronize, it brings it from the web and puts it into your desktop. So that's the synchronize button right here, okay? All right, so we've talked about how to arrange your references into folders and how to import um, references directly into folders from other, um, from the directly from the web. Now, if you have a reference stored in another reference manager, okay? So you may have it stored in EndNote. I don't have EndNote on this system right now, or you may have it stored in any other reference manager. Some people use Zotero, some use some other reference manager. Maybe probably you want to send it from one reference manager to another reference manager. Okay, all you need to do is under your reference manager where you are, you just export your reference and save it in a particular format. The most common formats are the .ris, okay? You have the end note format, which is .enw, right? That saves the document. And when you come into your Mendeley, all you have to do is go to um, file. Under file, you will see imports. Now, if you're with your Mendeley, go to the tab up by the left beside the name Mendeley Desktop. You will see where it says File. That's the File tab. Click on the File tab. One of the options under the File tab is Import. Okay. And when you click on Import, you would see three options there. So those three options, one of them includes the three formats that you can actually import as. So the first format there is B, that's B, that's BIB, that's Bib text. The second format is EndNote, that's the latest version, that's XML. And the third format is the Research Information System, that's .RIS. The format that EndNote recognizes easily is the .ris, but it can still import the other formats, okay? But if you want to save your work, usually the way, how it saves it, you know the way your Microsoft Word saves your work as .dox, so that, or .docx, so that when you're opening it in another document, it knows that this is a Microsoft Word document. That's the same way. So your references can be saved as um, citations, and these are the three um, extensions that it uses in saving them. So that's for the imports. Now for the exports, export means you want to save your work, right? You can export a folder, you can export just one reference. So you click on what you want to export and go to file, click on export, and it asks you where do you want to save it? You're exporting selected document. So you save as, so you want to save it probably as the person's name. So this reference is tools guard. That's his name. And where do you want to save it? Under my documents, under which, under downloads, under which folder. So you select the folder and finally you choose the extension you want to save it as. So you're saving it to take to another reference manager. So it depends on which reference manager you're taking it to. That will determine the extension you will use to save it. So you're taking it to EndNote. Please save it as an EndNote um, document. If you're taking it to another Mendeley, save it as Mendeley RIS or some other reference managers uh, recognize dot BIP. So but the one that is more generic that works with most reference managers is dot RIS. And you just click save. Now, when you click save, if you look at that particular file in your folder, it just looks funny. You can't really open it, but you can, the only way you can open it is with a reference manager, okay? It's with a reference manager. You can also export your PDFs with or without annotations. Annotations are the things you've highlighted on your PDF document. So if, um, if a reference comes with a PDF, right, you can export just that PDF as a PDF file. 
and a PDF file. I hope you know your reference manager can also in, can also save PDFs, so you can look at PDFs right in this reference management software. So when you import a file from um, from the web, if it has any PDF copy of that article, EndNote automatically looks for the PDF and imports it. So if a file has a PDF on this view by your right here, if you scroll down, you will see where it says file. If it has a PDF, you will see the PDF here. But this does not have a PDF, probably does not able to download a PDF. So it's what you can add a file here in case you have the PDF from other sources. So I'm going to look for a file that has a PDF copy and open the PDF so that you see how uh, Mendeley can read PDF files, okay? So we have a lot of files here. Let me see which one has PDF. Sometimes it also has a link on to where you can get the file online. So in the absence of a PDF, you will see URL. URL, those are all links to where you can actually access that article full text online. So this particular article has a PDF copy that was imported into Mendeley. So once you click on the PDF, it just shows on your screen. So you can actually read that work in Mendeley. You don't need to go to your PDF reader to read that particular um, document. You can read it in Mendeley, okay? You can read it in Mendeley. All right, that's just to confirm that I'm still here and you guys can still hear me. So you can read the full text article if it was downloaded into your Mendeley right in Mendeley, you can make annotations, you can highlight, you see where it says highlight, just the same way you can do in um, PDF files, okay? So you can highlight, you can color in different colors, you can select and so on and so forth, okay? All right, like I said, drop your questions on the chat box and we'll take them at the, at the end of the session. All right, so we've talked about how to import, how to export, how to edit citations in Mendeley. So this view right now is, you can see that there are two tabs here. The one that says my library and the one that says program evaluation in Med. So because I opened a PDF file, it opened a new tab. So I am on this second tab, I am reading these article, Program Evaluation in Medical Education. Now I want to go back to my library where all my references are. So you just click on that tab and it takes you back to your library. So this is my library right now. And in my library, you may have imported one or two references into Mendeley and they may have been improperly imported for various reasons. For example, if you look at the one that I highlighted, okay, I, hi I highlighted a reference. It has a PDF attached to it, but you can see that there is no title. You can also see that the name Probably if, if there's only one author, then it is complete. But if there are more than one author, it's only one author I'm seeing here. So let's come to the details. On, when you click on a reference, on the right-hand side of it, the tab on the right shows the details of that reference. It starts from the type. It tells you that this is a journal article. If that is not correct, you can change it because we know that your citations and your bibliography, the way, depending on the reference style, the way we reference books is different from the way we reference journals, is different from the way we reference web pages. If you don't indicate which kind of reference correctly, it will give you a wrong output. So if this is a web page and you have said it is a journal article wrongly, then it's going to reference it like a journal article knowing fully well that the way we reference a web page is different. So you can see the, all the different kinds of references you can make, a bill, book, book section. So they are all here, even the thesis, a report, 
a newspaper or magazine article. They all have different reference styles. Now, the next is the title. Now, because it's, there's no title, it says here no title, but we know that the PDF is here. So I'm not going to open the PDF so I can get all the missing information from that PDF. So the title here is Clinical Training in Medical Students During Preclinical Years in the Skills Lab. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste it where I have no title. So I'm going to paste the correct title there. I'm going to type it because I don't know why it did not. Oh, that was not copy I was doing. I was highlighting. Oh, no. All right, so I've put in the title and the author, just to confirm that the author is correct, okay? So the author is correct. Now, what is the name of the journal? Advances in, so you can see that Mendeley has a, the names of a lot of journals. So if you start typing, it automatically gives you options to choose from. So I've already seen the journal as one of the drop down options. So I'm confirming the year, I'm confirming the volume and the issue, which are all correct. Okay, now I'm going down. I don't think there's any other information that is missing here. So I have completed this reference manually and it is now correct and up to date. So you can actually put in this information yourself. For some other references, when you click on them, like this first one, you can see on the right-hand corner, it says here, details are correct or search. Now, details are correct. If you click on it, you're telling mentally that everything here is fine. There is no need for any correction. If you click on search, you're telling mentally that the details are not correct. Mendeley should search online on its catalog of of um, articles or wherever it can search online to get and update all the information on this particular um, article. So if it finds any information online, it is searching now, it will update it. So if probably some information was missing, after it searches it, you see that the information will be more complete. So if you see the option of details are correct or search, you can search. But it is still your final responsibility to make sure that your reference is correct. Now, sometimes something that happens is that it may import a reference and you may see the son name being put as the first name or vice versa. So you can see that I have opened up this reference. The son name is Sebiani. So you can see the format here is the last name, comma, first name in italics. So this last name is Sebiani Koma, the first name Abdulaziz, and another middle name M and a dot. So if it is an institution, remember that if it's an institution like WHO or World Health Organization, if you don't indicate that it is an institution, it will abbreviate it. So it will put something like organization WH, thinking that organization is a son name W. A world is a first name and health is a middle name. So in that situation, let me use this as an example. If this was supposed to be World Health Organization, okay? All I need to do is in the first option here, like I can see here in bracket, institutions slash organization. Once I click on it, it does not abbreviate it anymore. It leaves it the way it is because you cannot, you cannot abbreviate the name of an organization as the name of an individual, where you would put the son name first and the names in um, abbreviated. So it would leave it in full. But if I had left this World Health Organization and I don't indicate that it is, it is an organization, what would then happen? You would see how it would put it. So let me type it World Health Organization without indicating that it is actually a an organization, okay? It's just that it has seen a lot of you. So let me use another name. So let me say society.
Are you seeing that? So SFH International, it has abbreviated the S and put it as S dot international. That's because I have not indicated that it is an institution. But if I indicate that it is an institution, it automatically leaves it as it is. Please, um, can you type in the Q&A? Q&A section. Okay, so Akari is asking to show the synchronized icon again. So please look closely at my screen. My cursor, I don't know if you can see it. You'll see the synchronized icon on my cursor here. I don't know if mine will be different from yours. All you need to do, some people synchronize icon is at the bottom of their mentally. Mine is at the top. So all you need to do is, um, is to look for at the top left. Underneath where you have file, edit, view, tools, help. Just directly underneath it, you would see sync, S-Y-N-C, with uh, two arrows moving in a circular manner, okay? All right, if you have any other question, please put it in the chat box. So Chinefo is asking, is it only PDF file that is imported into Mendeley? Yes, it is only PDF files that is imported into Mendeley, okay? It is only PDF files that is imported into Mendeley. All right, so Mary, thank you for responding on the chat box. If you have any other question that is not being responded to, please put it on the Q and A, and I would I would respond to it. Moving forward, we're going to be talking about accuracy of our citation. So that's part of what I have been talking about. How do you know that your citations are accurate? So I mentioned one way is to search on your citation, and you see this green tick. There's a green tick here. So once it's finished searching and it has updated your reference to the best of its ability from all the information it can get online, it gives a green check to it that says this is updated. Then you, if you have gone through it and you are okay, all you need to do is click on details are correct so that that blue um, screen goes off your screen, okay? And that's it for that one. All right, so if there's any other um, problem with your reference, you may, need to, you may need to correct it manually. Now, if you have a book, if you have a book and you want to put in that reference into Mendeley, that's what we call manual addition of reference. So you go to file on your desktop, click on file, and you will see add entry manually. Click on file. You will see under file, after add files, add folder, watch folder, you will see add entry manually. Click on add entry manually and it will pop up a dialog box. Now the dialog box is basically the information you want to add from that book. The first one is asking you what type of, of um, reference is it? So you would click on a book Whatever kind, it may be a magazine, whatever it is, you select that option and you put in the title of the book. So you type in the title of the book, whatever the title of the book is, and you put in the names of the author. This is the format for the names of the author, last name, comma, first names. So I'm going to put the last name, which is Sokayari, comma, first name, Ogechukun. Okay, so that's it there. And here, so I may want to put M. Now here, it was published in 2021. What page do you have your reference in? 122 to 126. And this is information for abstracts if available, tags if available, keywords if available. For a book, this is important edition. So you can say second edition, editors, who are the editors of this book? So if it's still the same person or if it's a different person, who is publishing it? So Westworld Publishers. 
if there is a URL, we put it. If you have DOI as um, take a date of issue or ISBN number for the book, you put all that in. And that is it. Then you save it. So this was published in Port Harcourt. So I'm going to put the city. And I've put in every other thing. I say save. So once you save it, automatically it goes and adds to your recently added. So under recently added, you can see the first item here. That is the book I just added. So this is a manual addition of a reference. And I can cite it the way I cite any other reference. So you added it manually, you should be accurate because you are the one that added it. Put in all the necessary information, it gives you all the headings. Yours is just to key it in from your manual book and it moves in. All right, let me take some questions from the Q and A. Please, how can one reference a reference in a journal using Mendeley? Reference a reference in a journal. Okay, so you have a journal that has references. So you have to open the reference in that reference. So let me open one. So I'm going to reshare my screen. All right, so that's a journal and it has its own references, right? So you want to reference this reference. In some web pages, right? Automatically, when you click on Mendeley, on Mendeley's web plugin, it detects not just the first reference, it detects all the other references that are on the page. So like you can see here, the first one, simulation-based medical education, it has, it has um, identified it. So you can see that the first one, which is the main reference that is on this page that you opened, best practice skills lab training is the first journal. It will show you a journal article, which is what you have opened on the page. Now it has also detected all the references in this journal article and says that there are 49 more references detected on this page. This journal has cited 49 references. Actually there are 60, but it was able to detect 49 of them automatically, okay? So, and it has detected them in the order in which they were referenced. For some other website, it may not detect it automatically. So don't say, if it doesn't detect, it's a problem, no. Sometimes you may need to go to each reference, click on them, open them in another web page, and import it separately. But for this particular reference, it has detected the references of this journal article. All you need to do is if you want to just import all and sort it out later, you just click here, select all. So once you select all, it has selected all the 49 references of this particular article. And you choose the folder you want to put it into and you insert. So if I want to put it into this, fine. And I say add, okay? All I need to say is add and it starts adding. And once it's done, it's done. So that's for that question. I hope that helps you. And you will see all your references there. So you can now sort which one you want and which one you don't want, okay? Um, So the second question says, thank you, my didn't start from the beginning. Supposing I have used Mendeley for a project and now I want to start another project. How do I go about it? Do I just add another folder? Yes, you just add another folder. You can use Mendeley for 100 projects at the same time. You don't even need to finish one before you start the second one, okay? So you can be working on 10 different projects using 10 different folders if you're organized. Some people are not even organized. All their references are all jumbled up in the same place. Whenever you want to insert a reference, you just search for that reference you want to insert and you insert it and that's all, okay? All right, that's it. Um, okay, so we have the recordings for the classes and so we will get them. Please, how do I cite an original Ref, article reference that PDF can't be found. An original article reference that PDF can't be found. Okay, for you to cite a reference, you must not have the PDF to cite a reference. So far you have imported that reference 
from the website where you saw the reference. You can cite it with or without a PDF. A PDF is just for you to read the article in full and annotate, understand it, be able to summarize it, probably put in more information from that article. But online, if you have your abstract, if you just have the information about the article, you can import it into Mendeley and you can cite it in your work. Please take manual referencing again. All right, so let me take that again. All right, so I've taken the four or five questions. If I did take a question, please let me know. Let me take manual referencing one more time. Okay, so I'm going back to my reference manager. Please put your questions on the chat box. I will take them. Okay, so if you want to insert a reference manually, meaning that you have a hard copy of that document, or you're not able to import it automatically or, um, via your Mendeley web plugin. All you need to do is open your Mendeley, go to file, okay? Click on file, click on add entry manually. Click on file and click on add entry manually. Click on file. Click on add entry manually, okay? So on the add entry manually, you have to put in the information about the reference you want to cite. So the first information is the type of article or the type of reference. Is it a bill, book, book section, case, program, conference, proceeding, encyclopedia, film, generic hearing, journal article, magazine or newspaper article? Is it a report? Is it a web page? You indicate what it is. So if it is a hard copy journal, you can cite it as a journal article. You put in the title of the article, okay? So you type in the title of the article, do it as I am doing it so that it will stick once and for all. Malaria in pregnancy, put in the authors, you, saw, you can see the format. Once you click on the section for authors, you see the format for how the authors should be. Last name, comma, first names. So it's Isokarari, comma, first names. Getruku, Marian, okay. Then you want to put in the title of the journal. So Nigerian Journal of Clinical Practice, assuming that is the journal, the year is 2021, volume four, issue one, pages 100 to 103. And if you have any of all these other informations, you can put them in, all right? Then you click on save. And once you save it, automatically you see it under recently added. So if you click on it, the information shows here on the right. So this is malaria in pregnancy, journal article, authors, volume issue here, everything is here and you can cite it. Okay, let me take the next set of questions. Please, using Mendeley, and I see that two different articles with the same citation number, e.g. 13, 13, and they are not the same. How do I correct this? Okay, so you're using Mendeley, I don't think it should have two different citations with the same number. You need to update. You need to update and make that correction, okay? Um, also, after citation, I see that the references are not serially arranged. Even after clicking the re refresh button, e.g. 1, 2, 3, 4, 8, 6, 11, 5. Please, is this correct? Okay, so there are two reasons. One, if a number has appeared before, you're using Vancouver. If you have number one and you reference that number one again, it doesn't change the number. It remains as number one, okay? So number one will be number one, even if it appears at the end. So far, it was your first reference. Everywhere you cite that reference, the number doesn't change. If you have cited one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and you repeat a reference again, probably repeat number three, it will still remain as three, even if it's in position 12. So it is in a um, numeric order, but it does not give one reference a number twice. So wherever that reference has gotten the number the first time, 
it forever takes that number wherever it finds itself. Every other reference will now take the next number. So that could be the reason for your having um, it's looking like it's not serially arranged. Ada, you said I jumped your question. Please, can you just ask the question again? Because probably I clicked on done, but I'll try to find it. Let me look for it. Okay, so you said your references you imported are going to your reference manager. Should I delete the reference manager on my laptop and leave only the Mendeley desktop? So you say it is going to your reference, you have two apps you're working with. It's going to your reference manager and you also have a desktop. So my question is, is it also going to your desktop? Ada, if it's also going to your desktop, you have to choose one. Like I said, for the purposes of this class, we are doing the desktop. Once we are fully transitioned to reference manager, we will also update this class to showcase how to use the reference manager. For the purpose of this three days online class, we are talking about the desktop, the Mendeley desktop. Okay, so um, I would advise that use the desktop for now and um, we will, when we are fully migrated to reference manager, we'll also take reference manager, okay? Then the next one says, okay, so I'm gonna update again, let's see, right? Two references cannot have the same number. Update again, update again, okay? Um, what's your issue, Matthew? Re Vancouver referencing is appearing in bracket instead of superscript. Excellent. So let's take that question in detail, okay? All right, so there's, there are two Vancouver references. There's the Vancouver that has the bracket. There's the Vancouver that's the superscript. So you have not uh, um, uploaded the reference for Vancouver superscript. Ijoma Amadi, if you have a question, type it on the Q&A. Um, we're not unmuting right now. So if you want to, install a new kind of reference. So probably they tell you a citation style. Please go to view, go to view. On my own is view and I hope it is view on your own. So if you say view and you see citation style there, fine. If you don't see it, click on tools, look for citation style or click on edit, look for citation style. We are looking for citation style, right? When you see citation style, there's an arrow. It shows you all the different types of citations you have in your Mendeley. So you have an APA, American Psychological Association, seventh edition, sixth edition. You see a lot, then you see more styles. You would see more styles. I hope you guys are taking note because this is how to get more citation styles. And I don't know if, Tomatoka has taken it, but I am recapping. So click on more styles, a new dialogue box pops up. I hope you can see. Mendeley, can you, uh, Mary, can you see this dialogue box that says citation style? Yes, I can. Good. So under this dialogue box, if you are here, just follow, you will see get more styles. Before you click on get more styles, please search here to be sure that the style you are looking for is here. So we see Vancouver. What I don't know if, if this Vancouver is the superscript or not. So if I say use this style, if I go to my Microsoft Word and it is not that style, then I know that I'm wrong. So let me just assume that this is not the Vancouver I'm looking for, right? And go to get more styles. So I'm clicking on get more styles. You have to be connected to the internet, okay? you must be connected to the internet. So search, we are searching for Vancouver, not just normal Vancouver, but the superscript, okay? So let's look at all the different Vancouver's. Um, so this is Vancouver brackets, also, this is still brackets. So this is all brackets. Then you can see here, superscript, right? Perfect, I'm sure that's what you're looking for. Please click on install. You can see this little installed. Once you've said install, you now go to installed up here. All the ones that have been installed. 
and search for Vancouver again. And instead of using the normal Vancouver, you want to use the superscript. So that is use this style superscript. Once you go back to your Microsoft Word and you want to cite, so I'm going to share my screen for my Microsoft Word and I'm going to make a citation here. So I'm going to go to references, click where you want to make your citation, go to references, insert or edit citation. You can add your citation. So people that said recap, this is the recap. So you can add your citation either by searching in this tab here in your Microsoft Word. This is the citation editor. So I can search for any name, right? Or author or title or yeah, you can use or a, a keyword to search. Once you have seen the search drop down, you select the one you're looking for. So I'm going to select the book I just inserted and say, okay. And I have inserted that citation, Isoka Yari 2021. But I have not changed my style in my Microsoft Word. I changed it immensely. I've not changed it in Microsoft Word. So under your references, where you have the cytomatic in this tab here, you come here where you say style and you change it to Vancouver Superscript. If you don't see Superscript in brackets, it's not the correct one. So I've changed it to Superscript and you can see number 11, right? So it changes everything just with one click. So it has changed all my references. I had a lot on this document and it has all changed, right? So this is now 11. And even your bibliography at the end, you can see it is now numbered. It wasn't numbered before, but I can still refresh just to be certain. With one click, I can still change it back. So I'm not afraid to change my reference tab because changing it back is just a click away. So I'm going to go back to upper seventh edition. And you can see that the reference list has automatically changed. Now it's no longer numbered. It is now in alphabetical order. And you can see the reference I just inserted that was in, in superscript format is no longer in a superscript format. It's now the author surname comma the year, which is the upper format. I hope I've been able to answer your question in detail. Okay. That's that's Matthew. So I've answered your question. Um, can you take the aspect of citing articles of an organization? Thanks. All right. So just one second. Today is the last day. So I'm going to oblige the questions for today. So I, I was talking about how to, how to change the name if you're putting an organization and it has abbreviated that organization's name. So sometimes mentally doesn't know that the name you put is an organization and it abbreviates it by thinking that the last is the son name and the first is the name. So all you need to do is, as this name is here now, I click on it. The first option that comes up here is saying institution stroke organization. Once I click on it, it doesn't abbreviate it again. Sorry about that. Um, I changed something. So I'm going to write here, world health. Sometimes as you're typing, it already knows what you want to type from memory, right? So you can see a list of options. So you can easily click. So you can see World Health Organization in bracket institution stroke organization. Once you click on that, it leaves it the way it is. It doesn't abbreviate it, okay? So it leaves it in full. But if you did not indicate that it may, it may abbreviate it as the case may be. All right, so the next question. So I've answered citing an organization. How do I add a PDF found from another source? Good. So you have found a PDF from another source and you want to add it. So all you need to do is in that reference here, so you can see that this particular journal article there is no PDF. So under where it says file, 
you can see that there is no file here. If there was a file, you will see a PDF file here that you can click on and use. So what you need to do is to click on add file, search online where the file is. So automatically my, my folders opened. That's my um, folder in my computer. So you search your folders in your computer where you have saved the file, right? The PDF file and you simply click on the PDF file and click open. You can see that it has saved that PDF file. So you can see a PDF file has come up now, right? Good. You can always delete any file that has already been uploaded. If it's wrong, you can delete it. You can add, add just means, just like opening a document on your computer. Once you click on add, your documents folder opens, right? And that's it, okay? All right, so cancel. And um, I will just take one minute break. I need to plug in my system. So just give me one minute, I'll be back. All right, sorry for that um, break, I'm back. So I hope I was able to answer how to add a PDF from another source of AME, okay? Please, how do you eliminate duplicate related documents and just have only one? I'm liking the questions I'm hearing, that's nice. Um, so if you have a duplicate, so you can go to recently added or all documents. So you have imported a list of references probably from multiple sources and you want to, and you, you want to remove duplicate entries, right? So you need to go to your tabs, go to tools, right? On that tools, you see check for duplicates. So it will check for duplicates on your on the highlighted folder or library section that you have already highlighted. So if you click on check for duplicates, it automatically check and lets you know the duplicates that were found. So it has found one duplicate of this particular entry, Ali Liaquat, Nisir, Sabina. And on the right hand side here, it tells you about the fields that are conflicting. If the two um, versions of the duplicate entry are the same, to just tell you they are the same, you can merge them. But if they are not the same, it will uncheck some areas where they conflict. So to tell you that the unchecked boxes indicate fields where the duplicates conflict. So you have to manually review it and correct it. So since it's conflicting, you want to now be the judge and say, okay, this is a journal, this is the author, this is the title. So the ones that are the same, it will check it and say, okay, these ones are the same. There is no problem with it. And once you're done, you simply confirm the merge and it moves away. This is the second one. You confirm the merge after you have looked at where the duplicates agree. That's the blue check. Where they do not agree is the unchecked boxes. You, you can put it in there, or you can just leave it blank and look at it later on, okay? All right, so this is downloading one of the files here. So that's for that question. Thank you, um, Ngene. So I've answered your question. Isa is asking, how can I put references saved in Mendeley to my Word or PowerPoint document? So you can put it in Word, not in PowerPoint. PowerPoint does not have Mendeley sites, sites in, okay? And I just explained how to put it in Word. So what you need to do in your Microsoft Word document is to click where you want to insert the reference. Simply click where you want to insert the reference and go to your reference tab. So I have clicked here, go to references, click on references. Your Mendeley would open, assuming you have downloaded your Mendeley, you have installed it. You have also installed your Microsoft Word plugin, okay? So you just simply click on insert references. You see a small tab like this. You can search for the reference you want to insert. That is one way or you can go to Mendeley. So this is go to Mendeley. So you can go to Mendeley and search in Mendeley itself, the reference you want to add and click on it. When you click on the reference you want to add, you will see that when you're in go to Mendeley, these tabs include site, 
cancel. So you click on site. So you can see this site here. It wasn't there before when you were not coming for Microsoft Word. But now you're coming for Microsoft Word, you know that you want to cite a reference. So you highlight the reference you want to cite. If there are more than one, you hold down the shift button and you highlight more than one references, okay? We, we can see the screen. Okay, sorry about that. So, you know, the screen changed. All right, so that's the screen when you click on insert reference for Microsoft Word and you click on go to Mendeley. So you can insert more than one reference by holding down the control key and you click on site. So site is supposed to be somewhere here, but because I changed my screen, it has gone off. I'm going to go back to Microsoft Word again. So you click on reference, click on insert, you go to Mendeley and when you are in Mendeley, so if I go to Mendeley from my, my so if I share that Mendeley screen, it doesn't share it as coming from Microsoft Word. So once you do that on your own computer, you will see what would show. You will see sites. All you need to do is search and site. So you search here. So let me just search and show you. So you search in this search box here for the name, author, keyword, or the title. If you know the text you want to cite, highlight it like this. Besides sync, what you would see is site. You click on site. It is not here because it is not the page for inserting from Mendeley. So you just click on site. You see it somewhere between sync and help. It will pop up in between. Do it on your computer and it will pop up in between. All you need to do is click on site and it will cite that reference. Okay, so I'm still going to do that and insert my own reference. So I'm going to cite, I have cited it, I've clicked on cite and I have said, okay. And it has inserted the Taylor et al, 2019. The next question, sorry, please. The BIBRIS can only be used to save citations without PDF. I am still confused about the export and import explanation. Okay, so you're saving your citations without PDF, right? Um, not necessarily without PDF. If there is a PDF document, you can save the PDF document separately. Sometimes you save a citation, it saves it with the PDF, okay? So it depends on how you, you save it or how it saves it. So try you just practice it and see how it does that. Right? Can you practice it and see how it does that? How to move articles into folders. So I'm going to do a quick recap. How to move articles into folders. So it's very simple. Just click on the, on the article you want to move. If there are more than one, hold your command or your shift. Highlight them. Still holding those buttons, click and drag, okay? So it's click and drag. So depending on the name of the folder. So you must have created a folder. So you must have gone to create folder, put in a name, create a new folder, click on the reference wherever you have kept it. Is it under recently added? Or is it under all documents? Or you can search for the reference, click on it, put it into, drag it into the folder you want to put it into. And that is also, let me, this is the full reference I want to put in. And I want to put into this research methodology training folder here. So I just click, when I drag, you will see that it's dragging one file and it shows there not one, to show that you're putting only one file. If you have more than one file selected, right? It will, it will say two. So you can see here it says two, because I have two files selected and so on and so forth. I can't see Vancouver Superscript on my list. Now, I don't know which list you are on, but like I said, you have to download it. So if it's not in your list of installed references, then you go to the next button, which says um, get new references. Let me just take it one last time. Go to tools, sorry, view. Under view, you see citation style. 
an arrow on the right with a lot of options. Go down to more styles. When you're in more styles, the first option there is installed and on the top of that dialog box that comes up. Installed means you already have it installed in your, in your Mendeley. You just need to search for it and click on use this style. Now to be sure whether you have it or not, just search Vancouver. If you have it, it would show, you see Vancouver, Vancouver Superscript. If you see Vancouver in bracket Superscript, that's what you're looking for. Click on use this style. If you can't find Vancouver Superscript, go to the next tab here that says get more styles. On that get more styles, these styles are not in your main list, it's downloading it from the internet. So you just search for the Vancouver. There are a lot of Vancouver. So you may need to scroll down to be sure that you're looking for Superscript. So this is his Vancouver Superscript. And go to use this style. If you, because I've already installed it, that's why it says use. If I hadn't installed it, it would say install, right? And I would install, I will now have to go back to the installed styles, search for it and click on use. That way I can use it in Microsoft Word. Now, after I have done all this, I need to still go to Microsoft Word and change my style here. Under references, you will see Mendeley tab here. Go to style. Here it is still on upper seventh edition. Change it to Vancouver Superscript. That's the last step. Okay. I'm going to take it back because this is my document. All right. Moving forward, I can't access my newly downloaded style on my Microsoft Word. I click styles, but the Vancouver Superscript is not showing on my Microsoft Word. It means that you have not downloaded it and you have also not in. Um, clicked on use this style, right? So I just did it afresh. So I'm sure you were watching me while I did it again. Do it afresh the way I did it and see whether it comes up. How to add bibliography for you to show on the last page. Perfect, so I'm going to, I'm going to do that again, okay? So you just go to where you want your bibliography to be. I'm going to assume I don't have a bibliography. I'm going to um, insert a page break. So I'm going to a new page. I'll put in my heading, references. And I want my bibliography to be here. So I am where I want my bibliography to be. And I would go to references. Under references, you would see where it says insert bibliography. You must have put in one or two references for you to insert a bibliography. So I click on insert bibliography and automatically it has inserted all my references here, okay? So that's my bibliography. I hope that helps. All right, the last few questions. The references you just changed were previously entered into Mendeley. Is it possible to use Mendeley to alter the references of a document that was not ordered before with Mendeley? No, it is not possible. So you would need the reference that you manually entered into Microsoft Word. You cannot edit with Mendeley. You must enter it with Mendeley because it cannot, it, it is really your, you, in your Microsoft Word document, you have two types of doc of, of, of um, words of um, write up here. So if you see here, if I click here, it's just like, this is a normal text, right? So you can see how the cursor is moving. If I click on a reference, you see how the how the, it highlights it automatically, how the cursor moves on it. That dark shade shows that this is a formatted citation. It can be read by a reference manager, which is, in this case is Mendeley. So it is a formatted citation. This is not a formatted citation, it's just a text. So if you have typed in your reference manually, even if it's the same thing, it's so kairi, okay, chuku. Let me type it so you see the difference between the two of them. So if, even if I type this one like this, I have two things that look the same, but they are not the same. This is text. So kairi, comma, okay, so comma, 2001 is text. This is a citation. You can see it is highlighted. So you cannot edit this in Mendeley. You need to go delete this one, just delete it. Eh? 
get the reference for Mendeley, click here and insert it again. Okay, that's it. So it cannot delete it. In referencing with Vancouver superscript, is it, also, is it okay if we use Vancouver with bracket? So Vancouver with bracket is not the same as Vancouver with superscript, and I'm sure it will not be accepted. All right. Um, All right, so your major list site is not loading on MS4. So put off your Microsoft Word. You can restart your system and try it again. Thank you so much. I was able to answer about 30 questions today and I've taken a lot. So for this three days workshop, um, unfortunately the meeting for yesterday was not recorded. It was not intentional, but I'm sure it was just a, an oversight. But the meeting for, Sunday and today, um, I'll just share the links to our emails so that we can have access to it for this, for the two days for Sunday and today's training, you'll get it in your emails, the links to that, okay? All right, so thank you so much everyone for today's session. I hope it was very enlightening. I was, I've been able to answer all the questions in the, Q and A session. Okay. Thank you so much. And as usual, we'll stay with prayer. We want to end with prayer. But before I pray, I would want to use the opportunity to acknowledge the organizers of this program. First of all, um, Madam President, the President of Association of Resident Doctors, University of Port Harcourt Teaching Hospital who is here present with us, Madam President. Um, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for this platform. And thank you to ARDPTH for bringing this to the world and to Nigerian doctors. I mean, you may want to say one or two things to wrap up this session. Madam President, over to you. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, Good evening my 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 capacity vice president a mover and shaker brain box thank you very much for always anchoring this session we are grateful and to our guests and our members that come to support us and improve their wealth of knowledge we say thank you to you too for your time your attention and your patience with us we say thank you Thank you once again, Dr. Sukrari. You're the best. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you for all you do for ARD UPTH. Okay, so I also want to acknowledge um, Stats for Health, who are the technical partners, the ones providing this training, the wealth of knowledge. And I'm actually the lead trainer of Stats for Health. And it's like an NGO that's here to help Nigerian um, young doctors to achieve their full potential in the area of research. Okay, so that's basically what we do. So our uh, email address is statsforhealth at gmail.com, statsforhealth at gmail.com. So after this, if you have any questions or any um, other information you may need, feel free to send us an email. Okay, for now, that's our only means of um, communication. Um, we may not be able to respond to direct messages, WhatsApp and all that, but send us an email. We'll try our best to respond in, uh, in the shortest time that we can. That's number one. Secondly, our weekly trainings every Sunday has not stopped. This is based on popular demand. A lot of you requested for a workshop on mentally. So that's why we came up with this special three days package. We know that you may not have the patience to wait for every Sunday, every Sunday before three Sundays would come up, three weeks has gone by. So we did this in three days just for you, just for you. Okay, so as time goes on, if we see another area of special interest, we'll package something like this just for you, okay? So all you need to do to support us is spread the word, share the link on your various platforms, invite a friend that you know will benefit from these sessions and don't hold this information that, um, that is going around. It's actually going viral, okay? Um, thank you so much. God bless you. Have a lovely 
week ahead, okay?